Welcome to the MyPAR tutorial on creating an image stack. So in this tutorial we are going to go over how to first take your series of images, series of 2D images, and turn them into an aligned image stack. Now let me first mention that the batch processor is designed to let you take your raw data and in one fluid process Uh, select an area of interest, tilt correct it, align the images, apply a segmentation recipe, and get out a aligned image stack, aligned reconstructed volume, and aligned segmented volume, all in one process. So that is possible, provided you have a segmentation recipe beforehand. Uh, however, we have often found it a little bit easier to split up the workflow and first make an aligned image stack without any segmentation recipe, explore the image stack in the 3D toolbox, then export it back to images to make our volume reconstruction using a segmentation recipe. So that's what I'm going to show in these tutorials. It's a little bit easier to follow the workflow that way and it allows you to intervene in a couple extra places. So this tutorial is going to focus on the creating an image stack, the first part of um, reconstructing your 3D uh, set of features from 2D slices. So to begin, I just want to quickly show you the data that we're going to be working with. It is a FIB data set, uh, but this tutorial will not cover uh, tracking an area of interest or tilt correcting. Uh, if you require that, there should be a tutorial coming out very soon that deals with a more complicated dual beam focused ion beam FIB data set uh, where you need those extra measures. Um, I take that back. This uh, tutorial will cover tilt correcting. That's just uh, the click of a checkbox because this is a FIB data set. It was collected at a incident uh, angle other than 90 degrees, so we do need to tilt correct this data set, uh, but we won't do any area of interest tracking on this particular one, but we will do tilt correcting. I apologize. So this is the kind of data we're looking at. This is, again, a dual beam FIB serial section data set where we have these gamma prime precipitates that are being sliced. You can see their cross section changing as we slice through. We obviously don't have an aligned data set here. This is just the raw data as it came off the microscope so we will need to um, do some alignment when we build up our image stack. So that's the data we're working with. So to begin, uh, what we need is a batch process. We need to apply something to all of our slices, so we're going to use the batch processor. That's how you get data into 3D form. Uh, so, like I said, we're not using any segmentation, so no recipe. These are grayscale images. And where do we want to save the image stack? Well, I'm going to put that in the aligned folder here that I have. Okay, now the set of images that we're going to work with is not the entire uh, image set, and that's just because. Uh, there is such substantial misalignment in the data that um, we really can't use the entire image set. And for the sake of uh, speediness, I'm only going to use part of the data set as well. So I'm just going to take um, the from image 100 uh, to the last image, so uh, about 130 slices. And I've also determined that the contrast um, was much better in the second half of the data set. So we're just going to use that second half here. Uh, we don't need to do any magnification calibration uh, because uh, this is just an image stack creation. We will do this for the 3D reconstruction side. We'll skip this step. Like I said, uh, this is a dual beam FIB data set where we do need to tilt correct the images because they were acquired at um, a uh, incident angle of 52 instead of 90. We do need to align the images and um, the uh, the choose step 
portion is not relevant if uh, you don't have a recipe being run. Uh, we're going to use basic translation for the alignment. We don't have any uh, predetermined alignments, otherwise we would load them here if we did. And finally, we'll create an image stack. So we'll click process. And what it's first doing is just quickly checking the dimensions of all of the slices to make sure they're the same. And now it's running through each slice and aligning it to the previous. And so um, feel free to skip ahead to the end of this alignment. I'll just let it run through real time in front of you. But if you don't want to watch all 130 slices be aligned, feel free to uh, skip ahead a few seconds. So again, we're just opening each image, aligning it to the previous, placing it into a MyPAR image stack file, and, uh, well, opening the image, tilt correcting it, then aligning it, then stacking it, and now we're just saving the stack to finish. And the image stack is built. So we can launch our 3D toolbox and open up the stack and take a look at how the alignment proceeded. So we will open the stack. It was output along with the raw images, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the result of the tilt correcting and um, aligning as a sequence of images are saved in this gray modification folder here. Okay, but we are going to open this image stack. Aha, so we obviously have had quite a bit of shift happen during the alignment, and this is the largest mutually aligned volume that could be kept after all slices were aligned. Now we're looking at a cropped view, so the software has automatically cropped the uh, slices again to the largest mutually aligned uh, area that exists. We can look at the uncropped state and now you see black regions indicating how much each slice had ha has had to shift. So starting with slice one, we just hold down here, we can see there must have been a substantial shift as we saw when I was flipping through the raw data in uh, the positive x direction, the right hand direction. So all of the alignments have had to shift the slices over to the left to accommodate that and you end up with a very thin section of mutually aligned volume at the end and there's a little bit of Y shift that was corrected for at the end there. So it's not exactly an ideal alignment. What we can do is fix that a bit here in the 3D toolbox. So what I'll do is let's take a look at the plot of the alignments. So here are the XY shifts that have had to occur for each slice. Not much in the way of Y shifts, but plenty in the negative X direction, the left-hand direction. There isn't a, a significant point where the alignment gets far worse than before. It's kind of just a gradual, um, consistent shift that needed to occur. What we can do, though, is say, well, if I remove, let's say, slices 80 and afterwards, that's going to permit a larger mutually aligned volume. Well, we could go back to our batch processor and uh, only, you know, remove the, the, the last 50 slices and rerun everything. But to make it a little bit easier, what we can do is just say to remove a series of stack slices. So I'm going to remove multiple stack slices 
and actually let me cancel this here. Let me show you the cropped view. Remove stack slices. And I'm going to say remove slices 81 to 130. So we'll just keep the first 80 slices. So now this is removing those slices and now recalculating the largest mutually aligned area. And that's what we have. So by ignoring those last 50 slices, we've retained a larger mutually aligned volume. So I'm going to now use this aligned series of slices uh, in the next tutorial where I show you how to turn it into a 3D reconstruction. So the last step here will just be to export our stack back into images. We'll dump them right here into the aligned folder. My par will spit out each of those slices as um, grayscale TIFFs. And in the next tutorial, we will look at um, segmenting the features and making a 3D reconstruction out of them. So thank you very much for your attention, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.